Closing Open Innovation. A paper by Marcus Holgerson, Martin Wallen, Henry Chesbro, and Linus Dalender, published in Strategic Management Review. The literature on open innovation has documented how companies expand their boundaries to become more open, making use of external sources of innovation and external paths to market. Open innovation ventures into one of the most central issues of strategic management, the boundaries of the firm. It addresses, for example, horizontal and vertical integration, make or buy decisions, and the relationship between integration, technology, and performance. Several considerations impact the appropriate organizational arrangement of the innovation process, including the intellectual property regime, the distribution of capabilities, the systemic characteristics of the technology, and the cost and incompleteness of contracting. But these considerations are not static, meaning that appropriate organizational arrangements change over time. However, open innovation literature has been preoccupied with documenting how companies benefit from expanding their boundaries, forgetting that boundaries narrow as innovation relationships come to an end. In our work on the closing of open innovation, we explain how open innovation creates new relationships on multiple levels, and that the closing of open innovation entails the dissolution of this web of relationships. A core idea in our work is that the decision criteria to open at one point and close at a later point in time are not mirror images. It is not necessarily the same mechanisms that cause a relationship to form that ultimately leads to its demise. In other words, the closing of open innovation is related to new managerial challenges, which have not yet been sufficiently well understood. So, why is open innovation closed? One reason is simply open innovation failure when expected results aren't met. Another reason is that firms that in an early phase benefited from opening up their innovation processes to gain from distributed value creation and quick innovation diffusion may, in a later stage, gain relatively more from switching back to a closed innovation model to improve value capture. Yet another reason is the level of learning between partners, with opportunistic partners choosing to leave a collaboration when they have gained enough knowledge to continue on their own. Some open innovation initiatives are temporary from the outset, with more or less fixed closing dates, but may open up for recurring business. So, while these temporary collaborations will eventually end, the prospect of a further collaboration likely conditions behavior on both sides at that point. There are other reasons, too, which we explore in the paper. Now, what makes closing open innovation different from other disintegration processes? It's the central role of individuals and technologies in the innovation process that makes closing open innovation unique. We argue that over time, relationships among firms, individuals, and technological artifacts co-evolve in such ways that they pose critical challenges to strategies aimed at scaling back on open innovation, which in the long term may threaten the sustainability of the open innovation model. Technology is a central differentiator between closing open innovation and dissolving other types of business partnerships. When technology is involved, long-lasting and complex technological interdependencies evolve across firm boundaries. Technology is expensive to develop, difficult to purchase off the shelf, and often proprietary with long-lasting protection through patents or other intellectual property rights. At the same time, Technology is non-rivalrous in use, meaning that multiple actors can use the same technology simultaneously. These combined characteristics are what make a good case for open innovation. Instead of developing and commercializing expensive technologies uniquely in-house, open innovation can reduce costs and increase revenues from innovation. However, these technology characteristics also make relationships based on open innovation challenging to dissolve. Due to complementarities between internal and external technologies, a firm cannot simply substitute an external technology for another without incurring high costs. In our paper, we show that the role of technology plays out differently depending on the type of open innovation. Sometimes external R&D must be substituted with internal R&D. For example, Ferrari recently scaled back on its collaborations with Italian design houses, such as Pininfarina, which previously developed exterior designs. Instead, 
Ferrari recruited architect and designer Flavio Manzoni from the Volkswagen Group to build and lead the new in-house design team. In this case, closing open innovation required a massive buildup of internal capabilities. Clearly, technology impacts costs and challenges in closing open innovation. But technology may also trigger closure. For example, when technological complexity increases, the growing coordination costs of open innovation may lead firms to close it. This happened to Ferrari before bringing the development of exterior design back in-house. Supercars had become very complex, with a tight connection between the exterior's aerodynamics and the underlying platform's technology. To stay competitive, Ferrari needed to shorten the communication distance between the exterior design developers and the rest of the engineering team. The individual level is another differentiator between closing open innovation and dissolving other types of business partnerships. The function, motives, and capabilities of individuals are critical areas of interest in open innovation research. But we as a community have paid less attention to the individual level in closing open innovation. For open innovation to prosper, close personal relationships that cross firm boundaries are often needed. These relationships are manifested in shared language and meaning that allow individuals to engage in complex problem solving. On the flip side, such close ties can also lead to relational and cognitive lock-in, inhibiting both the dissolution of current relationships and the formation of new ones. Studies have shown that these relational and cognitive lock-ins constrained organizational members' ability to sever old ties. Although not necessarily visible, personal relationships can be incredibly strong and hard to break. Decisions and beliefs at the individual level may initiate, sustain, and close open innovation in a way that can be in line with or outright against the strategy of the firm. At this point, we may ask ourselves if closing open innovation is a phenomenon that raises relevant questions for managers. We argue that closing open innovation is related to several managerial challenges that we further explore in the article by linking the closing of open innovation on the firm level to relationships on the individual and technological levels. First, only when closure is considered can firms start actively managing their more extensive portfolio of open innovation initiatives to support their business model and strategy. Second, closing open innovation economizes on the limited attention of the firm's managers and employees. Third, open innovation creates long-lived interdependencies that must be managed during and after closure. Finally, we highlight how closing open innovation can be prepared and the difference between managing closing proactively and reactively. To learn more, read our full paper published in Strategic Management Review.